USB audio. Why does it suck so bad? Anyway, if you have a vintage DAC or if you have just a DAC that the USB on it is really bad or maybe it's really old and it just doesn't sound that great and you need a good solution, there are tons of solutions out there from really cheap to really expensive like DDCs and stuff like that. But um, I found a device, this thing, the Duke Audio U2 Pro that I think is even better than the shit E-tier, which was $99. And you can still find used probably for about $99. But this thing is powered off USB. You don't need a separate wall wart. And I think it sounds pretty great. I think it sounds pretty good. $65 from Amazon and even gives you I2S HDMI output. And you can run it off a linear power supply if you want. So let's take a look, right? Like, remember the days we used to just plug in USB through our computer and we didn't even think about it? Like, remember those days? Then we went to USB decrapifiers. And anyway, I digress. Um, you have the USB in here and you have a light that tells you, I think it blinks like red. And then you also have a DSD button if you have a DSD um, coming through. You have optical SPDIF output. Uh, the SPDIF output is actually has a one-to-one -one output transformer on it. Um, it does have three crystal clocks. Of course, it is like compatible up to 256 DSD. Whatever, because you can get that like, and, and probably even, you know, prob but you're limited on your SPDIF output to just 192, of course. Your USB out, or excuse me, USB out, I2S out, you have here, um, so you can plug in I2S, and of course you can get all kinds of output here because there is no limit on that. Cool thing is, the pinout is printed on the bottom of the box, so you can tell on the bottom of the case, and you can tell uh, if it's compatible with your device or not. I know some devices flip-flop the left and right channel. This will tell you exactly what pin corresponds to what. Um, and then you have this. You can run a DC 5 volt. You can run a um, output like a linear power supply or something because it will use the USB in. It doesn't need a separate DC 5 volt input but just if you want to run cleaner power you can even use the noise nuke idea from my previous video i'll put a link in the description um link i'll put a link to that video up at the top here um so if you want to take a look at that because you could you could definitely use the noise nuke with this uh i haven't tried it yet i haven't I haven't gone so far i've just used this device and remember this is the youtube pro duke audio makes the u2 which uh, the changes are the U2 is smaller. Uh, it has USB-C input, no 5 volt, no I2S, so it only gives you optical and SPDIF. The SPDIF is not, does not have a transformer one-to-one -one output, and you only have one crystal as opposed to three uh, crystals for, um, for locking. So that's the difference. But this device, $64.99, the U2... The non pro $54.99. So 10 bucks extra, and you're getting all that extra stuff. And I think it's well worth it. Compare this to the E tier. E tier might have sounded a little etchy compared to this. This sounded a lot um, smoother and it gave a lot more detail. One other thing that I'll say about it, or actually two other things that I will say. First off, it comes with specialized Xbox drivers. Okay. So you will need to save the drivers that it comes with. So, and if you use, it's USB 2.0 compatible, but which you can just plug it into any device. However, you want to use the drivers because of the way that the Xbox chip works and they have special uh, drivers to go with that. And you can use ASIO output if you have Windows. So you don't have to use Wasapi. You can just use ASIO outputs, which is really, really cool. I've never really seen ASIO outputs on a consumer device. I've seen it on interfaces like computer, like recording interfaces and stuff like that. But to see it, you know, on a consumer device, 
really, really cool. And like I said, $65. Amazon even sometimes runs sales for even cheaper. Uh, during Amazon Prime Week was like 55 Um It was the same price as the, the non-pro version. Uh, so look out for that. So the, um, the other thing I was going to tell you is that it does not run on a lot of current, even though that it has the five volt input. And I just mentioned this and I should have showed you why I still had the camera out, but I will show you how much current that it's actually drawing. And I have a, a plug in here. So 1.6 amps, uh, about it's plugged in right now as a USB, um, interface. So yeah, only, you know, five volts, 1.6 was only three quarters of a watt. So yeah, you, you totally don't need a separate, you know, power supply to run it. Um, you can run it off any USB, um, plug just works fine. Just, you, you might get some added benefit running it from a linear power supply, or like I said, a noise nuke. So yeah, there are several other devices that you can get like DDC's, um, the sky's the limit like, that have gotten way more expensive. Um, and even like a hollow audio red, which has a DDC and a streamer. And yes, you could also go the streamer route. I mean, right. You get a Pi, Pi 3 AES, you know, Allo audio, you could do all those things, but like, um, hi-fi digi plus, and I've gone all those routes and those routes are cool, but that's a, like a lot more setup than I know a lot of people like want to use. You just, a lot of times you just want to plug in a computer and get a really good, you know, output. And I think for 65 bucks, this thing is, uh, is a pretty cool device. I mean, for, for just a, a great DDC to use. So like I said, if you, if your USB on your DAC really not that great, or you have a vintage audio, um, you know, where you just need SPDIF, where you don't have USB on your device, uh, then you can use that. Now, USB is getting a lot better. A lot of companies are putting XMOS, like, in their DACs now, um, where you can actually use, like, Osio drivers for computer stuff. I haven't, I haven't personally checked out some of that stuff, but I know some of that stuff is out there. Um... And then, of course, like, again, you know, if you want to go even crazier, the Hollow Audio Streamer, which I do have, a Hollow Audio Streamer, that's what I mainly use, and I use the AES output on that um, because I don't have an I2S DAC. Um, but, you know, that is a whole other can of worms, and that's a whole other thing with the software and the extra stuff and the kernels and that you can run and all the different stuff, like all the different distros and then all the different, like some of the add-ons and, and I'm going to do a video on that, on my adventures with the hollow audio red and even had to spend a little bit of extra money above that to just, you know, kind of go crazy with it, but I'll get into that. So please like, and subscribe or just subscribe. And you can, you know, uh, here in the next couple of months, I'll, I'll have the hollow audio video where I'll talk about a lot of that stuff. And, you know, we can talk about that, uh, that streamer device because it is a pretty, pretty crazy device that hollow audio red. So we'll talk about that later, but anyway, the Duke audio YouTube pro, I'll put an affiliate link in the description also for the YouTube the regular U2 and the U2 Pro. Just know this is the U2 Pro uh, device. And also, don't lose your drivers because you can't find the drivers anywhere online. It comes with the drivers. I think there's a USB stick that comes with it that has the drivers. And uh, just keep them in a safe place because, you know, whatever computer you want to plug them in to, uh, to install them. So anyway, I'm Stereo Asmuth. You guys have fun. Take care.